Hi, I'd just like to take a moment to show you how you can use your calculator to graph some of the problems from this unit. So one of the problems that we had in our 2.2 homework assignment was number 14, and they asked us to make a graph of it. And most of you should have been able to do this by hand, but now I want to show you how you can do that with your calculator. So the first thing you do is you're going to turn your calculator on. Um, and you'll see probably your blank screen or something you typed into your calculator previously. And if you want to graph something, notice that right here in the upper left-hand corner is a Y equals button. And since we always put our s formulas into slope intercept where it's Y equals, you're going to hit that button. And now it shows you a whole bunch of Y equals values. And you can really type in a total of 10 different Y equals equations. But we're only going to do one of them. We're going to do problem 14. So in problem 14, it tells us we have a negative 3 halves for our slope. So when, again, when you type in fractions into your calculator, you use your parentheses. You will do negative 3 divided by 2 and close your parentheses for fractions. The X button is right here. It's diagonal from the second or that blue button typically. So it's X. And then your plus sign, so plus. And then since we're adding a fraction, it would be parenthesis again, one half, and close the parenthesis. So that is how you graph the equation, or type in the equation. Then you just hit graph to graph the equation. Now, if it gives you an error, which I purposely did so that it would give me an error, you always push number two. You always want to go to your error. And you'll see that it's flashing on that, what we thought was a negative sign. This is a subtraction here is a negative sign. So you have to hit the negative sign in order for it to work. So now if I hit graph, I didn't get an error. I just get to look at my picture. So this is a picture of my graph. Um, what I would like you to do next is we're just going to play around with some of the different features on the calculator. So if you hit trace, it shows you that you have a point at 0.5. And that should make sense because that is our y-intercept. It crosses the y-axis there. If you start to arrow to the right, it will give you a lot of different points that are on your line, not necessarily integer points or points that you would consider putting on your graph if you were doing it by hand. If I wanted to graph something or pick an integer, for example, if I wanted to substitute in 4 into this equation, if you hit trace and then type the number 4, it's saying substitute in 4 for x. If you push enter, it will tell you that if you substitute 4 into your equation, you will get a y value of negative 5.5, and that's the point on your graph for negative 5.5. So the trace button allows you to move back and forth, and if you push the trace button and type in a number, it allows you to evaluate at that specific number. Um, if you look down here, there's our window button. If you hit window, this is just telling you how large is your graph. It's telling you that the lowest x value is negative 10. Then it's telling you the highest x value is positive 10. And then it's telling you this number 1 is saying I'm counting by 1s each time. If I change this to 5, for example, my graph, if it's updating correctly, notice now it changed. Now it's going 0, 5, 10. Typically, we leave it at 1 unless we're counting by something very large. And you see it go back. Um, the y minimum just tells you that this is a negative 10. The y maximum tells you a positive 10. And again, the scale. Um, we never change this x, and I believe it stands for resolution. So the window button allows you to change what you're viewing. And that becomes important as it, depending on what data um, you are collecting. But anytime you want to graph an equation, you just always have to get y by itself, just like this equation, and then you can type it right into your y equals, and you can press graph. Now, we call this our standard window, so if for some reason you um, change it, if you hit zoom, and if you go back to number 6, it's called the standard window, oops, 6, it always makes sure that it goes back to the 10 by 10 window. But that's just briefly how you graph on your graphing calculator.